On this episode, I figure out why Peyton Manny told everybody to go to Omaha. Welcome back to your Park. On this episode, we're on location in Nebraska with an awesome Mopar club that was willing to show up on a Tuesday night to show off their cars and talk to me. With me right now is their president, Kurt. Kurt, welcome, thanks for yeah, being on. Yeah, thank you, thank you for, for hosting us. So. Um, tell us a little bit about your club first. Yeah, so we're the High Impact Performance Mopar Auto Club uh, based out of Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, we got together uh, about in 2005. Okay. And there was about a group of six of us. Uh, we got together, formed the club, and we've been doing this since then. Um, we actually have an annual Mopar show that uh, occurs every year here in Omaha. Uh, it's usually always the second uh, Saturday in May. Okay. And we usually get average of 150 to 200 cars at that show. Okay. So is it, it an open show or all Mopar show? Or? It's an all Mopar show. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay. That's a great turnout for an all Mopar yep. show. And we've then. actually added a swap meet as well. So now we have a swap meet. We've had that for the last few years too. So that's that's gone over really well. People enjoy that. Okay. And keep, people can find out about that on your, your website? Yeah. Or? Yep. They can find that out on our website. It's uh, www.highimpactperformance.org. Okay. Perfect. Um, and I see that you have one of your trophies here in yes. between us, right? Yeah, so this is actually, this is this year's trophy uh, for our 12th annual Mopar show. Uh, Mopar Mega Meet is what we actually have the, the name for that. And so this is our first place trophy. Um, Phil, one of our club members, does a fantastic job every year of designing these um, and putting something unique uh, every year. It's something different, something unique. Uh, and people really find that really, really special and okay. enjoy coming to our show. Yeah, that's a trophies. really sharp trophy. Yeah. Um, and what time of the year do you usually have the show? The, tro the show, excuse me. Yeah, so it's the second weekend or second Saturday in May. Okay, second so it's Saturday. always the second Saturday in May. So yep. if you find yourself in the Nebraska area or Omaha area in May, yep, come uh, check us out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, I might have to come out and just kind of hang out. Um, and not only are you the president and, and spokesman, but you also have a pretty nice Mopar. What do you have here? Yeah, thanks. Yep, this is my 1970 Dodge Charger. Uh, this is actually my high school car. I bought, purchased this back in 1986 uh, for $250. <laughs> That's a it steal. obviously didn't look like this, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So it uh, obviously has been restored. It was restored uh, back in 2007. Okay. And uh, full ground up restoration. Um, as far as the restoration itself, it's all back to, to stock again. Okay. So it does have the, the, the right plum crazy purple paint. It's got a gator green vinyl top, which is a r really rare option. Yep. Um, and then also has the factory luggage rack as well, was okay. another option. And what drivetrain did we have? Uh, 440. A with an automatic. With an automatic. Yep. And some of the ways you can tell it's um, a 70. Uh, charger is the grill, right? Yeah, yep. So for 1970, they changed to this kind of what they call a racetrack bumper. Um, and so that was unique for the 1970 model. Uh, the front fenders, of course, and the hood are unique as well. Um, <clears throat> one interesting fact about the hood is the hood um, is the same hood that they used on the Daytonas. Oh, okay. So, so there you go. Yep. Well, we're going to go meet some of the other club members now and talk about their cars. And Kurt, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. You bet. So here I am, I met up with Bernie, who actually was nice enough to host us tonight. Bernie, what you bring out? Uh, it's my 65 Plymouth Belvedere II, two, two-door hardtop. Okay, what drivetrain does it have? Uh, it's uh, currently got a 383 430 stroker in it and a four-speed uh, Mopar transmission. Okay. 355 gears too. And what about this car special to you? Well, uh, back in the middle 70s, I had a family member that had one of these, my uncle, and uh, uh, it went through three different other family members, and I was next in line for it in about 1976, 77, and somebody felt the need to steal it. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, and they, uh, they found it uh, in front of a lady's house, and uh, they come back that night and they burned it. Uh, oh. Whoever stole it burned it. And I was heartbroken, and I always told myself I was going to do another one just like it, and I found this, and... and uh, I'm pretty proud of what we've done with it. Right on. I love the color. What is that? It's simply called dark blue metallic. Dark blue metallic. It's beautiful. And what are some things that tell us that it's a, you know, it's a 65 Plymouth Belvedere? Well, uh, 65 was the uh, first year for the satellite. Uh, it's, it's got, well, no, uh, yeah, 65. It's got the, the convertible looking roof on it with the bump in the back. Yep. Uh, the 65 had its own grill, uh, the tail lights. Uh, they made a Belvedere one that had a post. And being a Belvedere too, this is a two-door hardtop Actual without a no post car. Right on, cool. And you have a handful of other really awesome cars in your collection. What else do you have? I got a 1969 uh, Plymouth uh, Barracuda, uh, 383 big block car, numbers match, four speed. 
Okay. Uh, it's a Formula S, they call it. They oh, made yeah. a little over 300 of them. Right on, those are super cool cars. Uh, any other cars in the collection? Uh, yeah, I've got a 68 uh, Plymouth Sports Satellite. Okay. Uh, 36,000 mile California car with a big block 383. Okay. Uh, original motor and transmission. Uh, I kind of went through the whole thing. It was painted when I got it. A buddy of mine in Lincoln has a restoration shop. He did under the hood for me. Okay. Real happy with it. And then you got a rag top sitting down the way, right? 69 Plymouth Roadrunner 383 automatic. Uh, okay. Power steering, power brakes, and air conditioned car. Yes. Uh, F5 green. Okay. Uh, which is a medium green metallic. Yeah. Uh, it's power, st uh, again, power steering and power brakes, uh, bucket seats, uh, column shifter. Uh, it's a uh, southern car, no rust, all original sheet metal. Right on. Uh, it's a pretty car. Well, thanks for hosting and thanks for having us and thanks for being on. Thanks for having right. us. We appreciate it. Yep. So we've moved down the line. We're here with Mike. Mike, tell us what you got. Well, I've got a 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner. I've had it since 2013. Took me a year to find this one. And uh, as I've had it, I've slowly made improvements from what the previous couple owners have done. Some of it, they did some good work, some of it not so good but uh, it's just been a fun car. I've enjoyed the hell out of it. Okay, and what kind of drivetrain do we have? We've got a 383 uh, engine with a, uh, with a Holley uh, double pumper uh, 750 for, for fuel. Got a four speed with a 323 rear end, sure track. Okay. So uh, I picked that up from out of an old Charger. Okay, right on. So, so what, are, what are some of the features that make it a 71 Roadrunner? Well, one of the things that I always like on, is the front end because this, the way this bumper is set up with the dark grill inside and the headlights, it always looked like you know a bandit, like eyes looking out. Okay. In fact, for Halloween, I made it into a giant pumpkin and this was actually the mouth. That's pretty funny. Um, but uh, that's one of the things. The other thing is the side markers. The side markers are actually flush into the side of it, whereas the 72s, which were the same basic body style, they poked out and they looked really cheap okay found out they actually came out of trucks and because they ran low on money didn't want to spend their money on it at Dodge I guess okay so that's one other thing of course it's got the road runner you got the the bird in the grill yep. which is super glued in so nobody can take it <laughs> and then they got the road runners on the side and then it has the road runner horn underneath okay so what was it that that made you want to get a 71 71 road runner well i I've, I've had when i fir i got my first road runner when i was in 74 i got a 69 road runner for 500 dollars that my dad found on his bulletin board uh down at union pacific Okay. And couldn't believe the price, and I was shocked that my dad actually was telling me about it because he knew that I had a little bit of a heavy foot. <laughs> but I bought, when I bought it, I could just barely drive a stick at all, but it didn't take very long to get used to it. And uh, my dad passed away in, in 2011 and left some money, and I said, you know, I need another car again, and I loved my Mopars. I loved my Roadrunners. So starting in 2012, I started searching, and it took me a year to find this one from a guy up in Massachusetts and he was selling it because he had just bought a brand new Challenger ah, yes. and his wife told him he could only have one toy. <laughs> so I got a pretty good price on it. I was happy with it. Had it uh, shipped here on, on a hauler and uh, came in filthy but cleaned it up and started working on it and doing some things. The first thing I found that was wrong with it is it didn't have a Roadrunner horn. Oh, you gotta get, you gotta get that on there, uh, right? I, I couldn't believe it. I thought, who would put a regular horn in a Roadrunner <laughs> when it's even got the little beep beep bird right on the on the steering wheel? Right. So I got that right off the bat. Had it shipped in from uh, year one, okay. and and much happier with the way the horn is from that <laughs> for point sure. forward. For sure. Well, Mike, thanks for bringing it out and thanks for sharing it with us. Oh, sure thing. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. So uh, moving down the line, we found an A body. Stephen, what you bring out? I got a '69 Dodge Dart two door sedan. Uh, and what's, uh, what's our powertrain? V7 Blue. It's oh. original color car. Uh, everything is original type of stuff, but it doesn't have the vinyl top on it. Okay. And, and our powertrain is? Our powertrain is? is a Stroke 360, Stroke to 408. Okay. It's 550 horse, 560 foot pounds of torque. Okay. Carmack 5 speed, 3 and A1 Posi, uh, power disc brakes, and power steering. Wow. So you kind of, kind of beefed up the engine and yep. everything going back. Um, and when we had the hood pop just a second ago, I noticed uh, no carburetor right. on there. I got fed up with the carb and went to a fast 2.0 okay. fuel injection. And so and it runs ever since. <laughs> right? Yeah. Every time, right? Every time for, you start it up. For sure. So what is it that, that is special to you about the 69 darts? I've always liked them. I was in the military and I was getting out in uh, late 69 and I, the darts had changed the, the new model year 70 and I didn't like the design so I bought a 70 Roadrunner full 46 pack right, car. Right on. So, but I always kept the darts. This is my second one. Uh, 
I built a 69 Dart about 20 years ago as a Pro Street. Okay. And a 472 Hemi, four speed, oh. Dana, you know, a narrow Dana. And it was a fun little car, but it was a handful. Yeah, I, I would say with that kind of uh, power plant in it. So what are some of the things that let us know it's a 69? Oh, well, basically it's the same cars, a 67, 68, except for they changed the grills and the side markers and the taillight section on it. Okay. So 67s were basically flat across here with no turn signals and no side markers. Then 68s, they came out with the round turn signals and the round side markers. markers. And then 69, we went to the squares. Okay. That, right on. Basically the same sheet metal, same everything in the same car. So. All right. Well, thanks for bringing out. It's a beautiful car. Thank you. So not everybody brought out classic iron. Jody brought out something a little bit newer. What'd you bring out? We brought out our 1999 Plymouth Prowler. They made 11,702 between 1997 and 2002. Okay. And what drivetrain did these come with? A 3.5 liter V6 motor. And they only came with automatics, right? They only came with automatics, okay. but it's a slapstick. Uh, so it actually does uh, feel like a like you're, shifting. like you're shifting. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the transmission was made so that when you're actually on the road and moving, it actually grips like you're like you're oh. shifting, and that was made for these cars to do that. That's pretty cool. Why did you guys buy a Prowler? They came out in '97. I could not afford them, <laughs> and uh, but I loved them. I yeah, loved them from the cool minute look. they came out because they were just so different looking, and so. We retired and I said, I'm gonna go buy myself a Plymouth Prowler. And we did. Right on. And there's some, you have done some great flame work on it. I mean, the car fits the part of like a, a hot rod from, you know, the thirties. Uh, I love it. You guys pulled in and I think that's an awesome car. You have the mural of the Prowler on the back. You guys have done an awesome job making it kind of unique to you guys. Um, a little known fact about the Prowler is they were actually made in the Connor assembly plant right next to the Vipers. So, right next to them, um, yep. And as most viewers know, I'm kind of a Viper fan. So that's pretty cool that they were on the same assembly or in the same factory. So Jody, thank you so much for bringing it out and sharing no it No problem. Us. Take care. Uh -huh. So if you've ever watched an episode at all, you know if there's an e-body, we're gonna talk about it. Gary, what'd you bring out? Well, this is my 1970 uh, Plymouth Cuda. I bought it in March of 1970. Right, first owner, original owner. I was owner. original owner and uh, drove it till uh, about mid 80s and put it in the barn my dad's barn and nobody would give me anything for it for a trade-in on a minivan since we had kids good thing <laughs> and uh then about eight or nine years ago we pulled it out of the barn and decided we'd just get it running until it ended up on the rotisserie <laughs> and we ended up doing a full uh restoration on it okay so uh yeah this is in our my uh, wedding pictures Probably why my wife let me spend that kind of money on it. <laughs> and uh, but it's um, got a 340 uh, engine in it uh, with a roller cam now. I didn't modify it a lot because uh, I wanted to be able to just drive it. Okay. Um, most of it's all original. I did put a uh, Passion Performance four-speed overdrive in it. Okay. For some highway cruising. For a little highway cruising because <laughs> it has 355s, and I thought, well. Okay. And air conditioning because I'm old and I like comfort. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. And what are some of the features that make it a, a 70 Cuda uh, for somebody that, you know, maybe doesn't know the E-bodies apart from one another? Well, in 1970, they were unique with, with, the, uh, with the grill okay. and the taillights. Uh, but the, um, uh, the 71, it came with quad headlights. Yep. And then in 72, they went back to the singles, single, uh, sure. dual, just dual headlights. Um, otherwise, really, there's a lot of similarities in all the years. Yep. A lot of it's just cosmetic, uh, sheet metal, yeah. uh, things of this nature. But most of the fenders and all that uh, uh, were very similar and all that. So. Okay. And what color is this? This is uh, Lemon Twist, the they call Lemon it. Twist. Beautiful. Well, Gary, thank you so much for bringing it out and being on. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yep. Take care. Hey, back to back at E-Bodies. I didn't park the cars. They parked them. <laughs> Dan, what you bring? This is a 1970 Plymouth Cuda. Um, this was my high school graduation gift from my parents in Greatest 1972. Ever. <laughs> it's uh, limelight is the color. It was restored in 1999 through 2001, back to as original as I could get it. And that day, 
there, there weren't a whole lot of parts being refabricated, so most of the parts that went into the car were um, NOS stock parts drawn okay. from over 21 states by our mechanic, who was awesome. Um, the elastomeric bumper on the front is stock and they didn't have them for the front end back in the early part of 70 only in the later part unless it was red okay so you've got the chrome bumper out back the painted bumper up front right and right. Uh, we were kind of peeking in the car and there's something kind of special about that right yeah it is an automatic with a bench seat and as as far as this car goes the 383 uh, in rough numbers there were approximately uh, 2,500 of them built and half of them were standard transmission and half of them were automatic in round numbers and half of the automatics were column shift and half were um, council shift. Okay and it's it's a beautiful car and, and thank you so much for bringing it out. You bet. Take care. Thank you. So the sun's setting on us here in Omaha Kurt, thank you so much for having me out. Thanks for everybody in your club for coming out and chatting with us. Give us the rundown on that show one more time. Yeah, you bet. So the, the 13th annual uh, High Impact Performance Mopar Mega Meet uh, will be next year on Saturday, May 11th. Um, so check out our website again. It's www.highimpactperformance.org. Um, we also have a Facebook page as well, so check us out there. And uh, we'd love to see everybody there next year. And we kind of didn't mention it at the beginning, but the show does go to a charity, right? Yes, yes. So we do. The pr proceeds from the show actually go to uh, one of the char charitable organizations as part of the school where we actually host the event. Um, and it's called Skills USA. Okay. Um, and so they provide a lot of activities um, around construction, automotive, um, you know, metal fab, those types of things for yeah. the students. Vocational programs. Yeah, vocational. There you go. Perfect. Yep. All right. So thanks again so much, and yeah. uh, until next time. Yep. Thanks.